Let's take a look at those coming up on deck tonight. Graphics, the latest in the VY VVT saga. It's all tax news, but we'll make it exciting for you. Plus, we'll talk about the latest decrim marijuana news coming out of uh, our state capital. And we'll uh, get plenty of holiday footage in there as well as it gears up, tis the season, all that and more. We're going to do it in 15 minutes or less. So stick with us right here on 545 Live. It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Nightly News. Welcome back to a Friday the 13th, 13th of December edition of 5.45 Live. Uh, taking a look at a little segment put together for a spooky uh, Friday the 13th that uh, landed on 5.45 Live back in May. All right, uh, we're going to launch into the headlines here on 5.45 Live, and for that... Uh, into the close-up we go. This week, the same Second Circuit Court of Appeals that ruled in Entergy's favor this year, backing federal judge Jay Garvin Murtha's overturning of uh, the Vermont legislature's Vermont Yankee Power Plant closing Act 160 legislation in favor of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's federally issued 20-year uh, operating license extension for the Vernon-based reactor. That same court has now dealt a hand in the state's favor, determining that control over how Vermont taxes the Vermont Yankee Power Plant should remain under state control. After Entergy Energy challenged a new slate of state taxes implemented last May as being punitive, even unconstitutional. And while the Second Circuit left the issue of the taxes themselves to the courts of the Green Mountains, they did find that the taxes were just that taxes and not a form of financial punishment served Vermont Yankees out of state owners uh, by uh, the state of Vermont following a prolonged and very public battle. Well, jumping from one 545 Live classic to the next, we'll take a look uh, after Vermont Yankee at Vermont Health Connect. And the uh, international company contracted to develop Vermont's controversial healthcare exchange website. Vermont Health Connect could lose out on more than just the $5 million already docked them by the state over missed deadlines. As VermontDigger.org reported this week that Vermont could be looking for a new company altogether to take the reins on the next stages of the website project. And if the $84 million already sunk into the online exchange are any indicator, bids for a coming round of much needed renovations to the online infrastructure should prove quite lucrative for any company now considering making a run at the state bid. For more news on Vermont Health uh, Connect, the exchange and uh, various deadline extensions and all like that, uh, we've been putting together a full special piece that will debut next Friday, 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on BCTV Comcast Channel 8. In the meantime, a series of clips, resources, uh, open forums, and public meetings can all be found by searching Vermont Health Connect or uh, Healthcare or Vermont Exchange, all at uh, our VOD online viewer destination at brettleborotv.org. All right, uh, next, time to go back into the stories here. Next up, if members of the public in Brattleboro were hoping to voice concerns over a proposed solar array slated to run alongside Interstate 91 in town, they'll have to find another outlet for their thoughts. As this week, the Public Service Board approved an expedited petition process for the array's developers, Win Stanley Enterprises, despite the Brattleboro Select Board's specific request to entertain more from the public. For uh, additional information on that, we turn to our reformer report, where we'll get one particular quote here from an early uh, Department of Service report, Department of Public Service report in Vermont, and uh, let's get that quote here. In a previous comment, the Department of Public Service said allowing the two megawatt project to be considered without uh, limited hearings, with limited hearings rather, let's try that again. In a previous comment, the Department of Public Service said allowing the two megawatt project to be considered with limited hearings would have a significant adverse impact on the state agency's ability to, to conduct thorough review of such petitions and in turn negatively impact the public interest. But uh, despite that, it's now been expedited and taken off of the uh, public slate. So for more on that, you can turn to uh, reformer.com, find that article, or pick one up on a newsstand. In addition, you can follow along with Reformer reporters and photographers as they report from the field on the go, now uploading short videos to the Reformer's official tout.com channel, tout.com slash bratreformer. Don't even need the old borough, it's just uh, tout.com slash bratreformer, uh, including their coverage of a potential uh, Grammy nominee in our region, the music director at Kernhatton Homes for Children. Uh, 
Lisa Bianconi, who was among 10 uh, finalists for the Grammy's first ever Music Educator Award this year, which is down from the initial 30,000 vying for the top honor, giving our region's own a good shot at that gold statue. Now for uh, more on the issue, we'll take a look and a listen to uh, some of Rice's video on that very tout.com channel we've been talking about. Here's Lisa and the students at Kern Hatton. All right, as promised, uh, the decriminalization debate, it's been one of the most controversial substances in American history. And while it lacks the alarming statistics that accompany other drugs like heroin, cocaine, and particularly alcohol, marijuana has spent the last century a criminal, landing millions in prison, racking up an impressive national cost in lieu of any tough fatality statistics, that is. And while many experts now believe the country as a whole is headed toward legalization, many marijuana advocates have contended uh, that passage of medical marijuana and decriminalization bills in states across the country uh, technically fly in the face of federal law. But uh, these are statutes that the Department of Justice announced this week they would unofficially uh, back off from with a hands-off policy toward marijuana in states where laws have been passed. Something Vermont's own Senator Patrick Leahy applauded on the Senate floor two weeks ago now. Well, the governor reported to the press at his regular conference that he would welcome a new round of debate over Vermont's own legal attitude toward the controversial plant. But with new dispensaries for medical marijuana slated for Main Street in Brattleboro and Putney, some residents are less than enthusiastic. There's also some debate from the addiction and mental health specialists in our region who say the risks marijuana poses for people in active recovery from addiction to alcohol, opiates, or other drugs can be more significant than people realize. It's an intricate issue. It has an intricate history and uh, help us at least uh, talk through some of what we could or should be thinking about here uh, as we uh, look at this issue moving forward and what can uh, one could only assume will become a uh, debate over legalization in this coming session after uh, decriminalization last year. Uh, we're gonna bring on the latest member of our 545 live team. He's uh, a personality co-host, one half of the team on BCTV's weekly half hour live call-in series, Let's Talk About Mental Health, where he joins area psychiatrist Nels Kloster. He's also a good personal friend of mine, Robert Stack. Robert, it's been great to have you on, on the 545 Live crew, in part because you and I get to chat about uh, these issues a little bit uh, in the time we have in between uh, takes and setting cameras up and wheeling things around. And Robert joins us now live in our downtown studios. Robert, thanks for coming in on a live uh, Friday edition of 545 Live. Let's uh, start with some of the uh, components of this ever-evolving uh, debate over marijuana's place in uh, society and acceptable society, uh, or accepted, I should say, society. Uh, let's talk about some of the uh, arguments that you think are uh, worth putting out on the table, and then maybe some of them that are not. And I, and I see the states, and you know, some of the states, it's against the federal law. I mean, it is illegal right now. It's a federal law, right? It's a thing. And I can't help thinking about when they were changing the speed limits. I remember that when the speed limits in the state said, well, look, we want to go 75. You know, we're, we're, you know. And finally, the federal government got sort of upset. And they said, well, good, you do that, and you're going to lose your highway funds. Right. Right. And I, I'm telling you, the feds don't take it lightly when you ignore them. I mean, nobody does. Robert Stack, the latest member of, of our... That's Robert Stack, the latest member of our 545 Live team. I like to refer to him as our current affairs analyst. He's also a good friend of mine. We get to chat a little bit about uh, issues in the local and national stratosphere uh, in our time in between takes and shows and bring it all to you here on the program as well. You can catch Robert in his full half hour series. Let's talk about mental health from uh, BCTV hardworking producer Andrew Kadonovan. It shows at 6.30 p.m. on BCTV Comcast Channel 8. Uh, again, it's always on Mondays, but it is live. 6 30 p.m. All right, well, we'll move on now here and check in in Washington, D.C., part of our uh, State House report, but uh, we'll head down south now and check in with uh, Vermont's U.S. Rep. As this week, Vermont's lone House Rep Peter Welsh took to the floor in Washington to urge 
Congress to follow Vermont's lead in adopting changes to current patent law to protect small businesses and nonprofits from the predatory act of patent trolling, a form of extortion employed across the country with increasing frequency as scammers attempt to solicit money from the victims uh, in their sites by demanding an often absorbent amount of out-of-court fees uh, on lawsuits trumped up over patent infringement claims, something current patent law complicates by often costing companies more to defend themselves in court than simply paying the extortionists their uh, out of court settlement ask um, or bounty, something uh, U.S. Uh, Rep. Peter Welsh urged Congress to see for the old-fashioned Wild West stick-up that it is. Patent trolling is a total and complete abuse of the patent system and a total uh, rip-off of hard-working people. And worst of all, it's a complete abuse of good people trying to do good things in their communities. Next up, event organizers say it could be the next strolling of the heifers, adding a winter compliment to the popular summer parade with a new Townsend-centric event uh, dubbed the Holiday of Horses Parade, which made its debut last weekend. And saw area equines marched from Leland and Gray's downtown Townsend High School campus along Vermont Route 35 to the Office of Valley Cares and back, and it was on the return leg that BCTV Executive Director and occasional 545 Live videographer Court Trowbridge caught us some footage for our broadcast. We're going to roll it now. Let's take a look. Speaking of the holidays, it can be a tough time for those uh, struggling with financial problems, uh, including uh, trouble securing housing. Uh, for more on that, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, annual Vigil for the Homeless, once headed up by the community legend Melinda Buzno. Now, the annual Vigil for the Homeless has uh, been handed over to area advocate and passionate pastor Suzanne Andrews, who leads the members of First Baptist Church each Sunday, in addition to her tireless efforts helping those in need in the region. And with this year's Vigil fast approaching, we'll take a little 545 Live rewind in time to last year's Vigil and roll some video now. Share your light, for I it has been an honor and a privilege to to house our homeless. Um, it's just been amazing how how wonderful these folks are. How they teach me. They grab a shovel and they'll shovel the snow out of the way, and and they're just amazing people. So it's for the last seven years. It has just been wonderful. So thank you and God bless you. And before we uh, launch out of this 545 Live weekend broadcast, there's some serious winter weather on the way this weekend. Uh, for more on that, we're going to turn now to the high school's morning news advisory broadcast, BUHS-TV, and see what their take on it is. Saturday, high of 35, low of 26. <laughs> Sunday, high of 35, low of 30. Monday, right now. <laughs> uh, high of 35, low of 31. 60% chance of snow. 80% humidity, winds at 5 miles per hour, and sunrise at 7.16 a.m. And lastly, there may be some snow coming, but there's still plenty of good stuff going on this weekend. We've got an interactive video calendar we roll out each and every Thursday on BCTV's official nonprofit YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV, where you can subscri subscribe and get all the latest uploads, but you can also see part of that video calendar here and now on 545 Live. It's all sponsored by the Brattleboro Savings and Loan and hosted by yours truly, as uh, each week I get to stand up in front of BCTV's interactive video wall and uh, host our calendar feature. Let's take a look. All right, uh, from there we'll move on and talk about WVEW, Brattleboro's own uh, community radio station, only non-commercial community radio station, and their benefit dance party at the Backside Cafe Friday uh, the 13th. It's going to kick off at 6, runs 6 to 9, includes uh, three DJs from uh, WVEW, and each and every one of the drinks purchased uh, in that time period, alcoholic or otherwise, benefit WVEW, so be sure to check that out. That does it for another edition of 545 Live and our weekly media roundup here at BCTV. I'll let you get out there and enjoy this snowy winter wonderland weekend, but I'll see you all next week. In the meantime, thanks for watching. All right, uh, Thursday, high of 40, low of 24. <laughs> yeah. What did Miss Claus say to Santa during a storm? I have no idea. Come look at the rain, dear. Uh, <laughs> Back to the desk. Uh.